Today, I'm going to show you how to build one of these, a bluebird box. The eastern bluebird is a beautiful migratory songbird often seen in our region throughout the early spring, summer, and fall. Male bluebirds are easily identified by their wash of vibrant blue from the crown down through their back and wings, accompanied by a rusty breast and light underbelly. Females lack the beautiful blue back and instead have a more dull gray-blue color in its place though they retain the rusty breast, often in more subdued shades. Juveniles, as seen on the right, do not yet have the rusty red breast, but have a light gray chest and underside, coupled with a darker gray back, much like that of the adult female. Eastern bluebirds have a range spanning the eastern half of the United States, reaching up into southern Canada and down along the eastern coast of Mexico. Populations in the lower end of this range tend to be yet resident year-round, though northern populations, including those found in Meadville, are migratory, making a yearly trip to southeastern U.S. or Mexico. Often some of the first migratory birds to return, bluebirds are a defining marker that spring is on its way. The most important aspect of your bluebird box project is what wood you select. You'll note that this board I've chosen is a little bit rough cut. You can see the uh, roughness there instead of it being a smooth, finished board. And that's going to be useful later on in the box when there are nestlings and they'll have to climb up the board and need something to grip onto to get out the hole when they go to fledge. The wood I chose is cedar. It's rot resistant, it smells really nice, and it'll last a long time. You don't want to use womanized pressure treated lumber because the chemicals in it uh, can be potentially harmful to the, board, to the birds. Uh, I've already gone ahead and marked up this board with the dimensions and everything else that we'll need when we go to cut it. Other tools that we'll need you're going to need instructions in your plan. I got these from the North American Bluebird Society. Tape measure, pencil, straight edge, drill bits, hole saw, hammer, drill, and ideally a saw for cutting up the wood. You can use a hand saw or I've got a miter saw that I'll use instead. So I bought a 1x6 board that was 6 feet long. You can do it with a 4 foot board. Uh, 6 feet is just what the hardware store had and then you mark it all out, make the cuts, and you've got a bird box out of one board. For the piece of wood that's going to be the front of your bird box, you want to make the access hole about five inches up from the bottom, centered obviously, and you want to use a one and a half inch hole saw bit, which is big enough to let bluebirds in, but small enough to keep out other predators uh, or parasitic nesters that might want to access the bluebird box and take over the nest. For the bottom piece of your bird box, you'll want to trim off the corners so that any water that gets in there can drain out and it makes it easier to clean out the nest box later. Uh, you can do it with a saw. I'm going to do it with a bench grinder just because it'll be faster. So now you should have all the pieces of your bluebird box ready, the front, two sides, bottom, and back. But you'll notice that there's no roof right now, and that's because I mixed up what bluebird box plan I was using. And this one isn't actually made from a single board, it has to be made from two boards. So I grabbed another piece of wood off of the scrap pile, and that will become the roof when it's all said and done. And now we're ready to start assembling. So why build a bluebird box? because bluebirds need our help. Bluebirds are secondary cavity nesters, meaning they make their homes in recessed holes but are not able to create the cavity themselves, and therefore rely on naturally occurring cavities or ones carved out by other species, such as woodpeckers. This inability to create their own cavities makes bluebirds vulnerable to changes in nesting site availability. Between 1920 and 1970, the eastern bluebird experienced a drastic population decline, largely due to habitat loss and introduction of invasive species. With increasing development, old forests have disappeared, limiting the availability of old dying trees best suited to cavities. Not only has the number of available nest sites diminished, but competition 
from, for those that remain has increased with the introduction of the half sparrow and European starling. Both species will outcompete the bluebird for nest cavities and take over existing bluebird nests. In response to the double threat of ultimate causes leading to the decline in bluebird populations, humans have intervened by providing artificial nest cavities for bluebirds by building and erecting bird boxes. Through the efforts of box builders, the eastern bluebird has seen a major resurgence, but continued supply of artificial nesting sites will be necessary to maintain their populations into the future. I've gone ahead and made a special guard for the box, so it's another piece of the cedar wood that I cut to 4 inches by 4 inches and pre-drilled so it won't split. It'll go over the box hole to make the entrance hole a bit deeper so that, uh, say, a raccoon comes up the pole and tries to get in to get at nestlings or eggs or anything, won't be able to reach in as easily. You'll often see older boxes with a bunch of claw marks around here showing that the guard has done its job. For the side door, I've gone ahead and fitted into place and drawn a line across. This will hinge upwards so that you can access the next nest box and clean out old nests and check in on your bluebirds. The line across is to make sure that the two pivot nails are directly across from each other or else the box won't pivot very well. So I'll go ahead and nail those in now. With the two pivot nails in, the door very nicely opens and closes now. And you'll note that on both sides I've left an air gap between the door and the roof for ventilation for the birds inside. To secure the door closed, I've gone ahead and bent a nail at a right angle. And I'll now drill a pilot hole through the front and through the side for the door and be able to put the nail in to hold the door shut. With the nail now in place, can easily remove it, open and close the door, put it back in. And the last step is to drill holes in your back piece board for whatever post you're going to affix it to. Now your box is complete and hopefully it will soon have a happy family living in it like this one.